Okay, this is going to be a much shorter video, just focusing in on the uh, the strengths and weaknesses of research and development spending. Um, so basically, when you're linking stuff to the goals, it's important that you can identify, all right, how does this research and development impact the goal, but then evaluate pros and cons of inf um, research and development separately to the impact that the policy has itself. So in terms of strengths, one particular strength that you could focus on after you explain the impact the policy actually has is the ability of research and development to target particular sectors or industries that they consider um, will provide a social benefit for the country. So research, recent changes to research and development grants and tax concessions allow, for example, clinical trials of life-saving drugs to be exempted from any cap on tax concessions. So basically they put limits on tax concessions, but not for something related to clinical trials for life-saving drugs. So that allows them to target particular sectors of the economy that um, specifically going to have benefits for society or have a social benefit for society. So that ability to focus on particular industries um, makes such policies powerful compared to the macroeconomic demand management policies, like a monetary policy or even cutting company taxes that don't target particular sectors. So what they can do is they can target particular sectors and provide additional support if it's something as important as life-saving drugs they can basically say, well, no, there's no exempt, there's no cap on tax concessions. You guys can spend as much as you want and we'll provide you with a tax concession for your spending. Monetary policy in particular, that's quite a blunt instrument, is enabled to do that. Um, another particular sec strength is that they can have economy-wide spillover effects. So it can have positive externalities that potentially weren't even the intention of that research and development spending. So positive externalities include the productivity benefits of new technology, um, and improving the production process, which allows businesses to reduce cost inflationary pressures. So what I'd be focusing on as your second strength is that it has um, spillover effect for the economy as a whole, but unlike budgetary policy, or actually unlike monetary policy, it's more effective at targeting cost inflationary pressures. Um, this productivity benefits help to reduce costs of production and help to increase demand, and that allows growth without inflationary pressures. So when you're linking it to the goals, what I'm getting at is you can make the links to all the goals as your strength, but you need to provide something specific about that policy that's different than just evaluating how it impacts that goal. So articulating that, you know, unlike monetary policy, it can target cost inflationary pressures and that it can have economy-wide benefits for the economy um, is more specific to research and development in itself and is a particular strength. In terms of weaknesses, um, See, while significant benefits accrue directly to companies themselves, such as increased market share or a competitive advantage, um, there's often this in, uh, uh, um, belief that research and development tax concessions or grants are seen as sort of backing winners and in discouraging other industries. So if they provide support to some industries but not others, um, then it can be seen as backing some and not backing others. So if the government support is not allowing market forces to determine what is produced and is sort of intervening in that process. As a consequence, such intervention could potentially lead to a less efficient allocation of resources. And secondly, subsidising businesses' research and development spending requires um, a reduction in tax collection. So a lot of these tax concessions um, means that we'll collect less tax, or if we're giving grants, it leads to more spending. So research and development tax concessions or grants can put extra pressure on the budget. This may require higher taxes to support sub-spending, um, which could put extra pressure on the budget and increase interest rates. So government spending on research, development, tax concessions or direct grants can have the unintentional effect of crowding out the private sector and reducing efficiency. Um, this is especially the case if the additional benefits to society and the broader business community are not sufficient to justify the expense. So there's no, if we can't justify the expense and it's not going to benefit society in any great manner, then perhaps it's not worth the extra expenditure. Um, these are just more some general limitations. So they only play a minor role in reducing inflation. It's often quite a long time lag provide, in providing the grant and it's eventually impact. So it's not a short term solution. There's no guarantee of success. Um, so these policies are often uncertain and there's often a large opportunity cost because the money has to be devoted from other areas um, and it can make it hard to achieve fiscal consolidation. So here's an example of a question just to finish off with, just to show you the difference between a strong answer and a not so strong answer. So this one says, discuss one strength and one weakness of research and development grants. Um, so essentially just giving money in achieving the domestic macroeconomic goal of low inflation in the short term. So strengths and weaknesses. So what you need to be able to do is explain how it achieves that goal, but then evaluate a particular pro and con. So a research and development grant is a cash payment, so explain what it is. 
Um, successful research and development should help to improve the quality of capital or technology and improve productivity. Greater productivity enables businesses to supply greater volumes of goods and services, puts downward pressure on prices, and helps to achieve the goal of price stability, which is 2 to 3% on average over, the, over time. A weakness is that they have a long impact lag. This is particularly true because it's a time-consuming process, involves a lot of trial and error, um, and it might amount to nothing. Therefore, money allocated to research and development is unlikely to, develop, to yield any benefit in the short to medium term or even any benefit at all. So there's one particular answer. The issues with this question is they've explained the impact the policy is going to have in productivity and said, all right, that's enough. I've, pro I've provided a strength, where they haven't actually provided a particular strength of that policy. So if you look at this mark allocation, definition of a strength, definition of a weakness, identify a strength, identify a weakness, explain the strength, explain the weakness. Okay? So it needs to be a clear link between the specific strength and why it helps to achieve that goal and a particular weakness for achieving that goal. It's not enough to just talk about how it um, works in general. So if you look at this answer, which is a stronger answer, very, a lot of it's the same. So we explain that it's a cash payment made to invest in um, research and development. Successful R&D helps to boost the quality of our technology, which helps to increase capital productivity. This helps to provide a greater volume of goods and services and puts down downward pressure on prices and helps to achieve the 2 to 3% goal on average over time. Um, but then it identifies a particular strength in achieving that goal. So aggregate demand policy, such as monetary policy, are incapable of ameliorating um, cost inflation pressures or avoiding cost inflationary pressures. So the good thing about research and development is that unlike aggregate demand policies, they can particularly focus on alleviating cost push inflation pressures. So this can be achieved by policies such as research and development that can work on the supply side of the economy, and that's a distinct strength of such a policy. So rather than just explaining how they work, there's a really clear link to that's the particular strength of this policy. It can target cost push inflationary pressures, the other one can't. It can target particular sectors of the economy um, and have flow on effects to other industries. A weakness of aggregate supply policies is they have a long impact lag. Uh, um, this is true because the research and development is time consuming and involves a lot of trial and error. The undertake might not result in any innovations or technological breakthroughs. So any benefit in terms of lower levels of cost inflation is likely to be a long time thing. Therefore, research and development can be ineffective policy to deal with rapidly rising prices in the near term. So again, there's this last sentence here identifies in more detail why the long impact makes it hard to achieve that particular goal. Okay, they're making it clear that in the short term, perhaps not that effective because there's the long impact lag associated with that policy. So this is a better answer because the strength is clearly identified um, about how it can target cost inflationary pressures, unlike monetary, and the fact that you know they go into more detail about that. Well, most of the benefits are a long-term thing, as opposed to a, it's not really a short-term fix. That's all.